Hello, welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm back with another major update coming out from Russia to share with you. So we're going to talk some more about the Kursk region. And I've got some big news coming out from there, okay? So we reported to you guys just yesterday that the Russian forces were counterattacking in the Kursk region of Russia in an attempt to push Ukraine out of their territory. And we heard they took something like eight settlements along with 150 square kilometers of previously gained territory by the Ukrainians. And it uh, looks like Russia was able to retake some of this territory that Ukraine had previously taken before. Okay, so I've got this big report coming out that Vladimir Putin apparently ordered his troops yesterday to push Ukraine out of the Kursk region by October 1st. This explains why we saw this offensive take place just yesterday. And this is very big news, okay? So it looks like Russia is going to try to attempt to completely push Ukraine out. Will they be able to do so? We'll have to see. I mean, they have taken a significant amount of territory away from Ukraine already in just the last day. So it looks like their counteroffensive was pretty successful for the most part. But I am hearing some updates that uh, we are hearing of massive losses from the Russian side as they are trying to push on the Ukrainians. I was hearing uh, that Ukraine was using a lot of FPV drones and they were destroying lots of Russian attacks on the western flank there in the Kursk region of Russia. So we'll talk about that some more. I also have an updated map that shows that Ukraine is also at the same time counterattacking and trying to flank the Russians in the Kursk region right now. So we'll go over that here in just a little bit. But first, let me show you this article. We're not going to go over the entire thing, just a portion of it. Um, as it discusses the fact that Vladimir Putin ordered his troops to try to push Ukraine out of the Kursk region. Okay, so again, this is on Forbes. Vladimir Putin ordered his troops to defeat the Ukrainian invasion of Kursk by October 1st. They just attacked. Russian forces are attacking on the Ukrainian salients left and right. It says down here, in a surprise move on August 6th, a strong Ukrainian force eventually numbering around a dozen battalions, each with up to 400 troops, breached the defenses along the Russia-Ukraine border adjacent to Russia's Kursk Oblast. In a heady, a heady couple of weeks, or heady, excuse me, a couple of weeks before the front stabilized, Ukrainians uh, routed poorly trained Russian conscripts and captured 400 square miles of Kursk Oblast. It says here, this has put Russian President Vladimir Putin under pressure, UK Defense Secretary John Healy said. Rightly embarrassed, Putin ordered the Kremlin to recapture Kursk by October 1st. Okay, that's literally just about three and a half weeks away from uh, today, September 12, 2024. And on Wednesday, Russian troops uh, dutifully dutifully uh, relaunched a counterattack along the western edge of the Ukrainian salient. Russia's counteroffensive to drive Ukrainians out of the Kursk region has officially begun, Finnish analyst Joni Ascola announced. The Russians targeted Snagosti. I think this is supposed to be Snagosti, but this is another way they pronounce it. A uh, village just south of the same river, eight miles north of the border. The main thrust involved at least eight tanks and other armored vehicles from the Russian 50, uh, 51st excuse me, Airborne Regiment. Hours into the counterattack, the village remains contested. The situation on the left flank of our group in Kursk worsened, Ukrainian anal analyst uh, group Deep State noted. Simultaneously, a separate Russian force rolled toward the village of Olenok on the Ukrainians' right flank in Kursk. Exactly how the Russians got to Snogosk is unclear. There are two routes to the village from Russian-controlled territory from the northwest across the same river or across dry ground from the nearby town of Kornevo. The latter seems likelier as the Ukrainian military has destroyed every permanent bridge over the same in Kursk and also destroyed most of all the pontoon bridges that Russians have assembled in the area. We've been showing you guys lots of video footage of these pontoon bridges being struck. It's a delicate situation for the Ukrainians at a delicate time. The general staff in Kiev took a big risk in ordering an attack in Kursk. In eastern Ukraine's Donetsk Oblast, the powerful Russian 2nd Combined Arms Army has been steadily marching towards Pokrovsk, a key Ukrainian stronghold sitting astride some important supply lines, okay? So uh, this is a big deal, obviously, for Ukraine, right? So when they when they launched this counteroffensive, or this offensive, excuse me, into the Kursk region of Russia, it obviously was designed to draw some of the reinforcements 
from Russia on the eastern front in the Donetsk region over to the Kursk region and take pressure off the eastern side. As uh, the Russians have steadily been gaining in the Donetsk region, especially on the eastern side of Ukraine. And, uh, you know, we'll, time will tell if this whole uh, offensive into the Kursk region was a good idea or not. But we're definitely hearing that the Russians have counter uh, launched a counteroffensive, excuse me, on the Ukrainians into the Kursk region. And they have lost some territory. But now I've got some updates to go over here. But uh, real quick, let me show you this also from UA Wire. Ukrainian forces launch counterattack in the Kursk region as Russian troops regroup. Now, I won't go over this, but we'll just kind of uh, just reference this for a moment. This just came out today, okay? So yesterday we heard that the Russians launched a counterattack in the Kursk region, mainly on the western side of uh, where Ukraine is currently operating right now. I'll show you a map in just a minute. And then also we heard from Volodymyr Zelensky early this morning. I reported to you guys he came out and said that this operation was going according to plan, that uh, Russia attacking Ukraine in this counteroffensive was part of the plan for Ukraine to continue advancing in the Kursk region, although they have lost some settlements and some territory. So at the same time, what's now being reported today is Ukraine has also counterattacked in the Kursk region, and what they are trying to do is flank the Russians right now. I'm going to show you something here on X that shows exactly that. And then this totally makes sense and matches up with what Volodymyr Zelensky had mentioned earlier this morning that I let you guys know in our update video regarding Ukraine and the war with Russia, that he came out and said that this was going according to plan, okay? That this counteroffensive was part of their plan, or Russia's counteroffensive attacking Ukraine, excuse me, in the Kursk region, was part of their plan to advance in the Kursk region, if that makes sense. Might sound kind of confusing, sorry. But let me show you this here, and you'll be able to get a better understanding. So this is from Samy. So Russia's went on the offensive as planned. They pecked at the Ukrainian plan in Kursk. The Russians moved equipment to the Glushkiv, which I believe is the Glushkovsky district, instead of withdrawing from there. Ukrainians began a counterattack and surrounded the Russian troops from three sides. Have to wait. Okay, so we got several things going on here. Ukraine currently controls this blue portion of the Kursk region that we've been talking about. Then yesterday, Russia launched a counterattack coming from Kornevo up here down to the town of Snagosti, which is what this red line represents. And then also the Russians are coming from the Glushkovsky district over here on over to the western flank of where the Ukrainians are taking over certain towns here, which is where these gray regions are, okay? This is the contested areas. But Russia has definitely gained some towns here in this area for sure. And then also at the same time, what was reported today is we had Ukraine launching a counterattack going up behind them. Okay, there's been lots of reports today that the Russians are operating a lot in this area right here. And this area over here, the Glushkovsky district, is being wide open. Okay, it's being left wide open, basically. So the Ukrainians are attacking from their own territory into the Glushkovsky district as the Russians are launching a counteroffensive over here uh, near the major portion of where a lot of the Ukrainian soldiers are at. So that's the latest that we have from the counteroffensive from Ukraine. We'll have to see what the results are going to be of that in the next couple days. But that was literally just reported today of Ukraine launching this counterattack, trying to come up behind the Russian forces and surround them in this area. Okay, and then here's the same river. We've been talking a lot about this. There's several bridges along key towns here that were destroyed. And then also Russia has been trying to conduct, uh, construct, excuse me, pontoon bridges also along this area. So that way they can cross the same river. But I heard that when uh, Russia launched their counteroffensive, they were able to reopen this land corridor uh, next to the same river as the same river runs all the way up over here. Um, and at one point, Ukraine pushed all the way up to the same river in this area cut off the land access for Russia to go through here and get over to this area. Then that's when they started bombing these bridges to essentially cut off this entire district. So um, obviously, like I said, there's definitely a counteroffensive coming from the Ukrainians at the same time while Russia is also counterattacking. Okay, so this is very big news. Definitely major firefights happening over here. I was even seeing some reports that the Ukrainians were using lots of FPV drones in this area, destroying lots of Russian equipment. Uh, the Russians were taking heavy casualties as they were trying to push forward in this area. So it looks like their offensive has been successful up to a certain point as they did gain 
at least eight settlements at approximately 150 square kilometers. But it does look it does look like uh, Ukraine is holding them back right now, and they have put a stop to this offensive. So definitely big updates coming out from the Kursk region that I just wanted to share with you and uh, let you know that it looks like there is a deadline by October 1st that Vladimir Putin wants his troops along with the Chechen Akhmat forces that are also fighting alongside of uh, Russia here in this region. They want them to completely push Ukraine out by October 1st. So, I mean, if we look at everything that's going on here in this war right now, it's getting absolutely insane. I mean, the fighting is intensifying on the Eastern Front. Ukraine is afraid of losing the entire Donetsk region here very soon. If Pokrovsk, that major key town on the Eastern Front, ends up falling soon, then we also have these cra crazy counterattacks happening over here in the Kursk region. Russia's trying to hurry up and get uh, Ukraine out. Um, and and uh, probably a lot of this is due to the uh, elections coming in November, and Ukraine is also trying to put together a peace summit. So this war is going to ramp up insanely over the next probably six weeks up until the elections in the United States. And hopefully we don't see a major war breaking out here, even with NATO getting involved at one point. We've been talking a lot about that, but it's just getting absolutely crazy and insane over here, guys. Just wanted to share you the latest coming out from the Kursk region. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today, but that's going to be it for today's update. If you got something out of this, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you. And with that, hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.